The Sahara is a desert located in the tropics. The Bedouin are the legend of the desert, who became the owners of the desert by cultivating and pioneering the vast field of sand. I saw the strong will for life they had, and how they chose to stay in their barren land until the end. Leaving the desert behind, I head toward the Blue Sea of Tunisia. The aquamarine Mediterranean Sea teemed with sea creatures. Tunisia is a small country, two-thirds the size of the Korean Peninsula. Tunisia is a country with various facets, from the Sahara Desert in the south to the Blue Mediterranean Sea in the northeast. Today I am headed toward the ancient city of Carthage that once dominated Tunisia. Carthage is located near Tunis, the capital city. The easiest way to get there is to take the train. The name of the train station is interesting in itself. Hannibal is the name of the general who conquered Rome in 3 AD. Carthage was his hometown. To Koreans, Hannibal is simply known as a great general. But to Tunisians, he is a hero of whom they are fiercely proud. At last, the train arrives in Carthage. Carthage was built in 8 BC by the Phoenicians. Carthage once monopolized trade in the Mediterranean region. In the middle of it all stood Hannibal. Traces of its former prosperity can be found in the local remains. Antonius Mogyokjang. This is the place that is Yogiga the saying, you cannot dip your hand in the Mediterranean Sea without permission from Carthage, shows the complete hegemony Carthage held over the sea. However, their force waned when they lost to Rome in the Second Punic War, known as the Hannibal War. Fearing that Carthage would regain power, Rome made sure to destroy the city. Only stone pillars and crumbled mud walls stand as silent witness to its old glory. The Mediterranean Sea can be seen beyond the ruins. It might be that the Blue Sea remembers the old glory days.
Next, I head toward northern Tunisia to the city of Bizert that looks out onto the Mediterranean Sea. Bizert is a quiet and peaceful port. It is one of the most European ports in Tunisia and a popular destination for tourists. One of the first things that comes into view is the bridge that connects both sides of the port. An iron gate in the middle of the bridge blocks passage across it. A young man mounts the fence as if it were an obstacle. <laughs> I wonder what she means by the bridge opening. A little later, the bridge magically separated into two parts and the opposite side of the bridge rose to the sky. <laughs> Once the bridge opened, freighters and passenger ships passed by. Bizert is a gateway through which vessels heading towards North Africa must pass. So it has to open its bridge twice a day. Unlike myself, who was excited to see this site for the first time, the Bizarre locals calmly waited for the gates to open. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. It takes almost an hour for the closed doors to open. I feel a little worried as well. Can you explain, is it inconvenient for you to close the door here? Nothing. Nothing? Bad thing. Bad thing, oh yeah. Why? Because of time. Ah, oh. This is my work. Uh -huh. This is after this part. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. There are some people who cross over the gate impatiently. After waiting an hour, the bridge becomes connected again. Once the gates are opened, the locals busily go about their business, as if they have seen Moses' miracle. From a traveler's perspective, the port looked leisurely and like any other tourist spot. But joining the locals on the ground and getting to know them helped me to feel what life was really like in Bazaar. There were more hidden attractions of Bazaar to explore. This is an old wall built by the Arabs in the 7th century. 
Standing on top of the wall, one can see the Mediterranean Sea connected deep into the port like a canal. Ram is a fisherman in Bezert. I got a ride on his small boat to travel along the canal. While sailing down the canal, the blue Mediterranean waterway seemed to tell stories of how it belonged to the Greeks, Arabs, and Romans, alternately for the past 3,000 years. The Mediterranean Sea served both as a bridgehead to expand the country's power and also a vulnerable spot that gave way when power was weak. The Mediterranean Sea is witness to history. It holds the evidence of the unrecorded rise and fall of Tunisia. This leg of my journey has brought me to a small seaside fishing village in Tunisia but the first thing I met in El Hawaria were not fish, but birds. The season of the chasse de l'épervier. Puisque notre zone existe entre les deux mers, c'est le cap, c'est le cap bon ici, c'est le détroit de Sicile. The many wetlands and abundant water around El Huaria create an abundant feeding ground. So it is an important stopover for migratory birds traveling between Europe and Africa. This geographical characteristic gave birth to a rare tradition. Is this for hunting? Falcon hunting uses a trained falcon to hunt wild prey. This is the first time I've seen a falcon at such close range. Although the falcon is trained, I'm still a little afraid. The falcon does not lose its wild state even if it is trained. Falcon hunting has been registered as an intangible heritage by UNESCO. It was introduced to Tunisia a millennium ago by the Arabs who came across the Mediterranean Sea. This falcon has finished its training and will be tested today. Its first flight fails. Muhammad induces it once again with a target. This time the falcon succeeds. The falcon catches its prey and shows its keen hunting instincts. 
매 분이. 정말 이 매가 비둘기를 이렇게 단숨에 이 급소를 공격해서 잡는 것을 보니까 이 지중해 자체가 아주 그 약육 강식의 그 정글의 법칙이 작용하는 곳이었잖아요. 그런 생각이 퍼뜩 떠오르네요. 한니발, 스키피오 아프리카누스 또는 시저 이런 사람들이 지중해에서 그 쟁투를 벌였는데 바로 이 매가 비둘기에게는 한니발이고 또 시저인 거죠. The falcon has a small body, but is highly skilled at hunting. The Tunisians of old must always have been on guard living next to the Mediterranean Sea. Maybe the falcons stood for their dreams. The Mediterranean Sea connected Africa with Europe and humans with nature. Crossing the bridge, I went in search of a small paradise hidden in Tunisia. The islands of Kirkenna are located in central Tunisia. There is only one way to reach the islands. I first have to go to Safak's port, which is Tunisia's second largest city and an important point of export to the east. The liner to Kirkenna runs eight times a day. If you don't arrive in time, you might end up waiting two hours. So it is important to check the schedule in advance. I checked the time in advance and was able to board on time. These students are from Tunis. It takes one hour to get to the island. <laughs> However, there was no time to feel bored. A party started spontaneously without anyone having to organize it. I suddenly feel like I have made many new friends. There is another way to enjoy my time on the deck. This is top deck, where one can enjoy the Mediterranean Sea taking in the sea breeze. I am usually shy around women, but I seem to get along really well with these ladies. I think that this is one of the fun points of traveling. They are very kind and continue to give me food to eat. Very good. This is Harisa. Harisa, Very good. Oh, this is a big love. This is Harisa. I'm a hamburger. So again, this is Harisa. Ham. This is egg. Kiran. Very good. The Korean taste is 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 very good. The people are riding the liner for different reasons, 
But because we are headed towards the same destination, and because we are in the same space, they smile warmly and greet the stranger. I think that the new friends I made were a gift from Kirkenna. Finally, we reach Kirkenna, our final destination. It's time to say goodbye to my new acquaintances. Bye. 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 Ah, fun. This is a great trip. You have to be in the same space. You have to be in the same place. You have to be in the same The small islands of Kirkenna are about the size of Anmyeondo Island in Korea. The Mediterranean Sea looks different here. It's a bit of a feeling, but I'm afraid of it. It's like a little bit of a horse, so it's not so much fun. It's peaceful. The average altitude of the island is 8 meters. It is close to being a plateau. The coastline is soft and the sea is calm. But the locals' lives are dynamic, just as in any other fishing village in Tunisia. The fisherman says that he just caught a swordfish and is ready to leave. I suddenly feel playful and pretend to run away with the fish. <laughs> Maybe he thought my joke was for real. The fisherman leaves in a hurry. It must mean that the fish he caught is very precious. This is the fish market where all of Korkena's fish come together. A new sight attracts my attention. Fish tails are hung from the roofs. In our tradition, when someone comes here, an alien comes here, he sees the fish. Sometimes it causes a bad feeling. It's like a talisman that brings good luck to the store. Paracuda. 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 I'm certain English. 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 That's good. You know, uh, and fish uh, dangerous, big dangerous. Oh, dangerous. Eat, and, eat, eat uh, for example, uh, oh, like, like shark? Yeah. It is local tradition to hang up the bodies or tails of large fish, like the barracuda, known to be violent and fast enough to threaten even sharks. Just then, spot another traditional site. He puts in a handful of salt. White foam is created when salt comes into contact with the octopus. It gets rid of the dirt. Kirkenna, a place where the fishermen handle octopuses in the traditional way, has long been the biggest octopus fishing ground in Tunisia. I am on my way to the sea because it is octopus fishing season in Kirkenna. The Mediterranean Sea, seen up close, is a beauty until itself. The 
파동이 하나도 없으니까 이렇게 유리처럼 아주 너무 맑아서 마치 이렇게 칼 하나 뻗으면 바닥에 닿을 것처럼 너무 투명하네요. To the ray that has come in search of warm water in the tropics and subtropics, to the cuttlefish. Several hundred forms of life live in the Mediterranean Sea. It offers as grand and full of view as a sea could possibly offer. The awe inspiring underwater ecology provides an abundant living to the island people. Who depend on the Mediterranean Sea for their livelihood. Three hours after we set sail, the first trap is drawn from the water. A huge octopus is caught. Its powerful suction cups are hard to pry off my arm. No matter how hard I try, it is not coming off. Who would have known that such a powerful creature lived in the peaceful Mediterranean Sea? However, thanks to the octopus, the Kirkenna locals can live abundantly during the spring and summer. Fish are caught all year round in the sea. The Mediterranean Sea is a precious source of livelihood to the locals. There is another welcome form of seafood found during the octopus season. It is the cuttlefish, known to be the most tasty member of the octopus family. Something has stung my palm. The culprit is the cuttlefish's jaw. Cuttlefish have sharp teeth, so you have to hold it by the body. Perhaps it was my foolish bravery, but the fishermen complimented me and gave me a prize. These are the intestines of the cuttlefish. It is a delicacy that can be used to make soup. It has a slightly fishy taste because it is raw. <laughs> 
Mehdi prepares something else. He cleans the fish and octopus caught during the half day's hard work. He then cooks them on the coals he has prepared in advance. I didn't do much to help him, but he said that I had done a good job and that he would prepare me some octopus to eat. A freshly caught octopus cooked on the spot. It must be the freshest octopus dish in the world. It is a humble meal prepared in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. A meal prepared after a day of hard work. Could there be a more elegant party on deck? The sun sets beyond the shoulders of fishermen that live on the Mediterranean Sea. And I find myself at sea again. These people lived humbly, taking only what the sea had to offer. And the Mediterranean Sea quietly embraced the lives of the fishermen of Kirkenna. <laughs>